two, part two, part two of the reality of living as a new creation. The reality of living as a new creation. Now, how many of you, you, you are familiar with that particular verse of scripture, right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, right? We, we, we're familiar with that, right? And, and we can read that and we will all agree, oh yeah, that's in the Bible, that's true, right? Uh, but yet, oftentimes, uh, what we experience, what, what our day-to-day -day reflects, suggests that, not, that, that ain't nothing changed. That we're still who we were and everything is still like it was. I, I, see, see, what happens is we'll receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. We'll, we'll profess a faith in the shed blood of Jesus. We'll be born again. We'll have eternal life, right? And, and but yet, uh, we don't continue on in the Lord to discover uh, the prophetic you. See, see, God is raising up a prophetic community. And, I'm, and, my, and when I say that, that's a, that I'm not talking about uh, a, a, a community of prophets where everybody is a prophet. But I'm, I'm talking about a community of believers uh, who know how to properly handle and respond to what they hear God saying. And see, as a new creation in Christ, uh, you, you're, you're, you're a, you are, you are completely different, separate, and set apart than who the world will tell you you are, or who you who you once identified as being. You're not that you anymore. Amen. The you you are now in Christ is a brand new you. A you that has never before existed. The you you are now in Christ is the you that, he, that the word of God declares that you are. And see, that's why you are a prophetic you, because the you you are is the result of what God's word declares that you are. So the you you are now in Christ, a new creation, uh, you, that the you you are as a new creation is the you that God's word declares that you are and who you should be declaring you are as well. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? <clears throat> so. <clears throat> uh, let me read it to you like this. We're not talking about a community of prophets. But those who know how to properly handle what they're hearing from God and who know how to respond in faith, listen to this, in order that what they're hearing from God will actually prosper in them and accomplish for them what God intends. It, see, see, too often, where well, we've been conditioned through religion and, and just, just bad teaching to just believe, to, to have the, the, to, that our approach is, well, if I, just, if I just come to church and I hear the word, then everything's going to be all right. And that's, that's not so. That's not so. That's a part of it, but that's not all of it. You do need to come to church and position yourself so you can hear the word. That's right. But to hear the word only really doesn't, it really doesn't benefit us. Wow. Right? right? We have to come and position ourselves to open our hearts to hear the word with the intent to be a doer of the word yeah. that we are hearing. 
And so it's, it's, it's the proper handling of the word we hear that, that determines how effective the word we hear is going to be in our lives. The word we hear and give our attention to and respond to in faith, our, our proper handling of it is what determines how much that word is going to be able to profit us. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> look at, look, well, I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go over there, but, but you know it. We, we visit it quite often. Matthew 6 and 10, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, remember, what, 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 What's going on? Why is Jesus telling them the disciples this? He's responding to them, to the disciples, asking him to teach them how to pray. And so he's breaking down and he's saying, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, this not necessarily, this doesn't necessarily mean that you pray by reciting this word for word. This is not, uh, uh, it's, it's not necessarily meant for recitation. But it's, it, it provides a model, a guideline, a blueprint in which we are to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we are acknowledging that God is our heavenly Father, right? Hallowed be thy name. We are, that's, that's a time to worship and honor him for who he is. Lord, I just worship you as Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord my God who healeth me. And I love you. I honor you. Lord, I worship you as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my God, who sees beforehand and makes provision for what you see, Lord. I just worship you. I honor you. Right? So, for, for, so okay. So, so, hallowed be thy name. Right? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, so now, understand the result of our prayer life, or I can say it this way, the result of uh, the, the, the what's, what's going to determine if God's will is done on earth or not? We are, we are, we are. But, but how? What's, the words we speak, the words we speak, right? The words we speak, right? So whose words or what words should we be speaking? God's words, right? So, 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 so the thing that determines whether or not God's will is done in earth, the way God's will is done in heaven, right, is our proper handling of what we hear God say. Y'all yeah, yeah. follow what I'm saying? Go to Isaiah 55. I guess I better turn there too. Isaiah 55, and we looked at, it looked at that, uh, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, y'all pray with me, pray for me. We, we looked at this some Wednesday, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. Yeah. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Right? So we see here that God has a, 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 a manner of thinking and a way of doing things that's higher than our way of thinking and our way of doing things. Right. It even as the heaven is higher than the earth. So is the same with God's thoughts and God's ways. Right. <clears throat> so so. You, you, Psalm 119 and 89 says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Right. God said it. And it was settled in heaven. Yeah. 
Now, everything God has said to us by his spirit, somebody heard it and, and, and spoke it as well. And upon speaking it, it was written, it was recorded, it was scripted. And so every word that God has said was heard, said as well, and then recorded and scripted. So every word in scripture, right, is settled in heaven. But, but unless you are saying the same thing, it will remain settled in heaven. It will not be settled in the earth in your life. And, and that's why, that's why we, we have to, we got to realize it's, it's so much more than just coming and hearing the word. No, yeah, I got to come and hear it, but hearing it, hearing it is, 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 necess, is a necessity. It's essential uh, to me doing whatever, whatever else I need to do for it, do with it, to benefit from it. See, see, everything God says is forever settled in heaven, but until I say it, it's not settled in the earth. Every promise that God has made, every promise he's given us is written in that book and it's settled in heaven, but it will not be fulfilled or settled in our life until we say it ourselves. Okay. All right, so... He goes on to say, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So let's back up to verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, Verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The same way the snow and rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth, God's word goes forth out of his mouth, right? And waters us, strengthens, refreshes us, right? Now, the Bible says that the snow and rain don't return back to God. And it's comparing the, the word that comes forth out of his mouth with the snow and rain that comes from heaven. You got it? Amen. The same way the snow and rain come from heaven and water the earth and doesn't return, so is it with my word that come forth out of my mouth. But then if you keep going, it says... It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return to me void. Now, we, we pointed this out Wednesday. So if the word is compared to the snow and rain, and the Bible says the snow and rain doesn't return back to God, but then the Bible says about the word that it doesn't return void, well, does it return or doesn't it return? Well, it does not return automatically, but when it returns... It doesn't return void. So how do we, how is the word return back to God? By speaking it out of our mouths, by saying it, by declaring it, by decreeing it, by confessing it. Right? So now listen, listen now, listen now. If the word doesn't return automatically... But when it returns, it doesn't return void. If it doesn't return automatically, then the only way it can return is if we are returning it through our confessions, through our prayers, through our declarations, through the words of our mouth, right? And so now, Our confession of the word is the method, if you will, whereby the word returns back to God. Right? 
Okay, so upon returning, it says it will not return void. That means, that means it will not return useless or, or without having accomplished the thing God purposed, the thing God intended. So there is a purpose, there is an intention. Every word God speaks, every word he sends is with intent and it's with purpose. It is for something. The word God sends is never sent just to be heard only, but, but to be spoken out of our mouths and returned back to him. If he's sending it, it's, it's so it can be returned back. Because sending it alone does not, does not accomplish his intention. Look, 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 look. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And here's the thing. It doesn't prosper. It doesn't prosper in the thing he sent it and accomplish all that he pleases when he sends it. But it, it, it accomplishes all he pleases and prospers when he sent it in the return. It's our returning the word. That causes the word, that enables the word to accomplish all he pleases and prosper in the thing that he sent it. Yeah. It's, it's, see, so no, in other words, to just hear the word will, 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 will refresh us and strengthen us. It may actually encourage us and create a sense of hope. Right? But, but if, we're, if we don't take the word that was sent. And handle it properly. Respond and mix faith with it. And return it with a confession. Then it doesn't return at all. And if it doesn't return at all. Then it's not accomplishing anything. So it accomplishes all he pleases. When it returns back to him. Through our confession. So if we're not saying anything. Then, 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 then nothing is being affected. Nothing is being accomplished. In other words, your life is not changing just by hearing the word only. But the change only occurs when you respond to what you hear and return it back through your confession of faith. Are y'all following what I'm saying? God sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from all their destruction. Okay, the intent of that was for us to be healed and delivered. But the intent is not accomplished unless we hear what was said and say it back through our confession and declaration. Oh yeah, I know the Bible says that, that himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. Yeah, I know the Bible says that by his stripes I'm healed. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, the Bible says it, and it's forever settled in heaven. Is it settled in your life? Is it settled in your body? Lord, I see in your word that Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. Therefore, I believe I received this, and I'm declaring and I'm decreeing that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am free from every infirmity, sickness, disease, pain, grief. I am free and redeemed from suffering and sorrow. What am I doing? I am taking what God sent, and I'm returning it back through my confession. And as it returns back, it accomplishes the purpose of which he sent it in the first place. Creating and producing health. Amen. Thank you. Health. Woo! Glory to God. My God. Shall supply all your need. According to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. The Lord. Is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
Why is that in the book? It's God. Now, how did it get in the book? It, get, it got in the book because somebody wrote it. How did somebody come to write it? Because somebody spoke it. How did somebody come to speak it? Because God said it and they heard it and responded in faith, handled it properly and spoke it themselves. So, so the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's forever settled in heaven. But if it's going to be settled in my life, where I shall not want, i got to take that and decree that and thereby establish here what's established there. Amen. Amen. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Amen. Glory to God. So, so if I ain't saying nothing, I ain't changing nothing. I'm just, and, and, and if I ain't changing nothing, oh, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven, but I'm catching hell while I'm in the earth. And I'm living beneath my privileges and my rights. I'm missing out on the reality that belongs to me as a new creation. See, if you are a new creature, you have an altogether new reality that belongs to you. But if you're not speaking in line or in a way that's consistent with being a new creature, you're going to continue to have what you had before. Why, why, why you was an old sinner. Glory to God. Man, thank you, Jesus. See? Oh, help me, God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Look. Go to, go to 2 Corinthians. Oh, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, man, thank you, Lord. This... Ooh, this is, it just, it's like, it's like, it's like water, man. It's just refreshing. So, so remember now, remember, remember. Every word that God speaks, he speaks with something in mind. He speaks it for a purpose. Right? It's not something he's saying just to be heard, but he's saying it so we can receive it and in turn decree it and speak it ourselves. So every word he sends, every word he speaks. Now, now understand, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Understand, understand, understand. I, I mentioned this Wednesday as well about two New Year's Eve services ago. I made a statement similar to this. I don't remember it word for word, but basically what I said by the Spirit of God is that the good and that God desires for us to be seen and enjoyed by us is going to depend largely upon the honor and esteem we show to the wards, the one he sent. But also it's going to have largely to do with, with how we respond to the prophetic word. Now, the prophetic word can be a word that, that I'm preaching to you right now by the unction of the Holy Spirit. It can be a preferred word in the form of prophecy. It can be a prophetic word in the terms of rhema when you're visiting with the Lord in prayer and fellowship. And all of a sudden, just reading the scripture, bam, the light comes on and you get quickened in your spirit and refreshed. Okay, that, now the scripture, the logos just took on a voice and ministered life to you. It spoke to you. That rhema you heard is a prophetic word. And so the good God desires to be seen in our lives, the only way he can get it to us is in word form. And so as he speaks, he's speaking with the purpose to give us seed to sow. And so we take the seed and we sow it by taking the word we hear and speaking it. And in speaking it, we return it back to God. And in the return back to God is how it's able to accomplish and prosper in the thing he sent it in the first place. So... The good that God desires to see in your life, to desires us to have in our life, 
depends largely on how we respond and what we do with the prophetic word or the word we are hearing. Do y'all do y'all get that? Be because see, the way God set this thing up, the way it's supposed to work, people He calls into the ministry, people He calls into the fivefold ministry gift, people that 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 He gives the body as a ministry gift, right? should be are to be submitted to Jesus because the ministry that we oversee is simply a portion of the ministry of Jesus Christ and so he's given everyone he's called and chosen a portion of his ministry and so to the degree that we're submitted to him and surrendered to him in in his service we become an extension of Jesus are y'all following what I'm saying so as an extension of Jesus in a local assembly or in whatever body or capacity you're ministering, as an extension of Jesus, <clears throat> we don't decide to preach just what we want to preach. We're speak, we minister what God directs us to minister, what God gives us to minister. That's how it's supposed to work. So, so then, if, if God gives a minister a word to minister, that word that he gives that minister is for something. It is for some purpose. It is to accomplish something, to prosper in a particular agenda. So then... If we're on the receiving end in the congregation, God has given the man or woman of God a word to minister that contains the life, the power, the revelation, the wisdom, the grace, the anointing. It, 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 it contains all that's necessary for our life to be what God wants it to be. But in order for what God wants our life to be, to be, in order for that to actually be, we have a responsibility to properly handle that word that's being ministered, Amen. to respond to it in faith. So, 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 so your life is not going to get better just because you're crying out to God for it to get better. Your life is not going to change just because you fast. Your life ain't going to change because you do everything you know to do to live right. Your life ain't going to change just because you come to church every Sunday and every Wednesday. Your life is only going to change to the degree that you take what is being preached and handle it properly. You have, to, you have to receive what's being ministered as something spoken by God and not just something a man is saying. Because only then can that word work effectually in our lives and produce the fruit God intends for it to produce. So, 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 if you have no regard for the messenger, if you have no honor or esteem for the one God sends through whom he speaks that word, then the word spoken is going to have very little effect on your life because your lack of honor and regard because, because your offense is going to block. Man, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to get you to worship me. God and me both are well aware of my, of my flaws. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to worship me. I'm trying to get you to recognize the system, the order, so you can benefit and maximize the flow of God's anointing that he's releasing for your life. 
Jesus said this. The Bible says in, in Mark chapter 6, when he came to his own homeland, oh, they were impressed with his wisdom. They, they, were, they had heard about the miracles, but they were offended at him. They allowed their familiarity with him to cause them to mistrust him and become offended at him. And because of that, the Bible says that there, where there was no honor, there could, he could do no mighty works. The anointing that produced the miraculous in other places could not produce the miraculous in this place because the lack of honor blocked it. So what I'm saying is, what the Spirit of God is saying is, the things God desires for us to have in our lives are going to heavily depend on the honor we have for the one he sends, and it's going to heavily depend on our response to the prophetic word. To the word that he gives me to preach, to the word that somebody may prophesy, to the word you hear in your spirit, you're visiting with the Lord, or even sitting in this message. If you're hearing it, you're not just, God didn't say it to you and reveal it to you just so you can hear it. He revealed it to you, he's releasing it to you so you can respond to it. And in your response to it, you can benefit from it. Y'all see what I'm saying? Oh, well, okay. Well, listen. <laughs> if you don't know me by now. No, I ain't, I ain't trying to say it. I'm trying to communicate a point. If you don't know me by now, you'll never know me. So ain't no need of me tiptoeing with you. So we have got to learn, regardless if it's me or anybody, whoever is standing in the stead and in the name of Jesus, ministry, the word of God, we who are present to receive must hold the person in a particular regard of honor to fully benefit from what God revealed to them and what God got on them. So to, to fully maximize the flow and the supply of God's anointing being released in a service like this, right? And to have it produce in our lives, then there needs to be a level of honor and regard towards the word. More so than what we're demonstrating. And, 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 and I'm just mentioning this because it's coming up. Not that it's going on here today. It's not. I mean, I'm, I'm not. But, but I'm just mentioning it just for future references. So we'll know. So if someone is here ministering and you got a private conversation going on, you whispering, you talking, you getting your joke on, you catching up with, with people you, you know, there's a time and a place for that. Amen. This ain't it. Amen. You, need to, you need to get some boldness about you too and let people know that trying to do, no, uh, not, not now, not now. The, the word about to come forth. 
And I mean, we got to take it that serious. You, you and I have got to hold the word in such a level. Of, see, 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 all you need, all you, all you need is to just hear that one ray of word. To, to hear that one word in due season. And respond in faith. And your world changes. Your world changes. But if you laughing at the joke. When God is speaking. You missed a life changing opportunity. Because you valued somebody else above God. Because you valued not hurting somebody's feelings above God's word. Elder Lead is real good about this. If, if, if a word comes forth, particularly like something by the Spirit of God, she's real good about recording it. Right? I know that because she done sent me the recordings. Right? And I appreciate that. But if you perceive that's happening, you need to record it. Pull up your phone. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. And then visit with the Lord over it. Rehearse it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Because it's, a com it's, it's serving to help accomplish something. Amen. When, when we hold it in high enough esteem to submit to it and make adjustments and come into alignment with it and then speak it back out of our mouths to God through a confession. In the confession, it's returned back and it's returned and it's, it's in the return of the word that it accomplished the thing for which it was sent. I'm trying to get to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I, verse 14, for the love of God constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Jesus Christ died for all, right? Okay, so the conclusion of the judgment is then all, then, then all are dead, right? And that he died for all. So verse, the verse, verse 15 says, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Okay. So if Jesus died for all and we agree that he did, then we reckon that all were dead. Okay. Now, for those who, who are in Christ, right? If we're in Christ, we die in him and we now live in him, right? But now that we live in him, right? We don't live for ourselves. Right? Who do we live for? Y'all say it with some boldness. Say it like you believe it. Right? Verse 16 says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Okay. So, 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 okay. I had a note here I want to give you. Uh... We, 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 we're to no longer live from self, but from Christ. We're no longer to live from self, but from Christ and to Christ. Yes. All right. Let, 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 look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Help me, Lord. Help me. All right. So. Verse 15 and 16. Jesus died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, in themselves, of themselves, for themselves. Right. But they should live unto him, for him, in him, right? Yes. Which died for them and rose again. So that we who are in Christ Jesus should no longer live in and of ourselves. We should no longer live for ourselves. And I'm going to put it to you this way. We should no longer live from ourselves. We should, what I mean we should no longer live from ourselves. We should no longer live from the understanding that the wisdom of this world gave us. In other words, we, to, to no longer live from ourselves, we should no longer live from 
who we think we are based on what the wisdom of this world said we are. Okay. So, 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 so if I'm in Christ Jesus, I'm no longer living from myself, right? I'm no longer living or conducting my life uh, from, the st from my knowledge of my tendencies, my failures, my shortcomings, my weaknesses. I'm no longer living from the self that the world told me I am. I'm no longer living from, from a mindset and an outlook that the wisdom of this world shaped and molded. I am now living from Christ. I am living from the revelation of who God says I am, of what God says I have. I'm no longer living from the self that's based on what I can perceive with my senses and how I feel. I'm living from the self revealed to me by the Spirit of God based on the Word of God. Y'all get what I'm trying to say? So, 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 I, I, so, if the wisdom of this world tells me that there is a, a pestilence and plagues and viruses and infections and disease that are presently in the earth, and then tells me and presents me an answer for that that is not consistent with the new creation that I am. I cannot live by the wisdom of this world and the wisdom is presenting to me as to how to deal with the evil that's in this world. I gotta live, see, see y'all, 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 see. All right, you, 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 you can feel good. You know the Bible says, by his stripes I'm healed. And you feel good in your body. You believe you're healed. You go a few days, you go to coughing, you get a pain, you get a symptom, or what have you. And so now you start saying, more so than not, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. All right? So far, so good. But maybe, maybe the pain increases, the symptoms worsen. And so then you go to, you go to a doctor. And the doctor says, oh, based on our examination, we see you got strep throat. You got sinus infection. You got uh, TB. You got COVID-19. You got the flu. You got, okay, now... Our confession has completely changed because as soon as we get home from the doctor, somebody said, well, how, how you doing? What did the doctor say? Well, they say, I got this, I got that. And the next thing you know, yeah, I got this, I got You done changed your confession. You let the wisdom of this world cause you to change your confession and thereby change your condition. See, if I'm living from Christ, from my place in him, from my union with him, from the revelation of who God says I am and what belongs to me, if I'm living my life from that place and not self, not the wisdom of this world, then regardless of what the wisdom of the world tells me, I go with what God tells me. See, it's when we begin to say stuff about us God didn't say, is when we get in trouble. So my place in Christ, my union with Christ, demands that I no longer live from the flesh, from self, but that I live from my place in Christ as revealed by the Spirit. And I do that by saying about my life, my situation, my circumstances, what God's word declares about my life, my situation, and my circumstances, continuously. Yes. 
and then following direction from the Holy Ghost, acting accordingly. I cannot, dare not allow the, the presence of an evil condition or situation cause me to begin to say stuff about me that God didn't say. Because then I'm going to establish a different reality than what he intended. Think about it this way. I just heard this recently. This bless my heaven considered it from this standpoint. Remember in Genesis after, I think chapter 3, after uh, Adam and Eve had said they ate what they weren't supposed to eat, right? The Bible says God heard the voice of Adam walking in the garden. And his response was one of fear, and he went and hid, right? And so God says, uh, where are you at? And why, why, what you doing over there? Why are you hiding? Adam says, because we were naked. What did God say? He said, who told you? Because I didn't. Who told you? Oh, it look like I'm going to be short this month. Who told you? Oh, it look like I'm, I'm coming down with something. Who told you? Look like this ain't going to work out. This Who told you? Did God tell you that? Then don't you be saying it. Don't. See, the prophetic you is responsible to declare about you what God says about you. Yeah. To speak in a manner that's consistent with the new you. Yeah. You're supposed to say that about you as opposed to what the world, the conditions, or the circumstances say about you. Yeah. Because, see, you are the deciding witness. You got the devil on one hand, you got God on the other hand, and your voice is the deciding witness. What you say is what's going to be established. Y'all follow what I'm saying? See, that's why that word was sent to you. The intent and the purpose of it being sent was you to respond in faith with it. Speak it back out of your mouth so that, so that God's will could be established for you. As opposed to the evil circumstance that's being presented to you. Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I got to warn you, sometimes, sometimes people, sometimes, you know, even people, you know, sometimes people don't want to, uh, sometimes they, they, they sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you just got to pray for people. Because see, see people, some people might say, I'm, I'm, I might be a little extreme or, or, or I'm, I might be a little extra. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. See, see, see. <laughs> see, see, see. Somebody said, well, uh, this situation happened the other day. And see, man, I'm conditioned when I hear. Once you tell me what happened, right? My, my, my mind is, 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 is on red alert. I'm listening. I'm, I'm dropping down in my spirit for what God says about what I'm hearing you say. Because I am not in any way about to agree with you if what you're saying didn't come with, from what God said. So when I don't agree with you and I come out my mind with what God said, don't you go to tripping and talking about, oh, you so deep. You always got to respond with the Bible. You better respond with the Bible. Somebody talking about, well, I, I can't talk to you. You just, you just, well, okay, listen, you know what you're going to get. If you don't want the word, if you don't want the truth, hey, look, you call me. I'm minding my business. You call me. You texted me. If you, if you, if, 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 if you don't want to hear to the best of my ability to hear and discern what God has to say about it, don't call me. Don't, don't bring it up to me. Don't bring it up to me. Why? 
why should I endeavoring to let the word bring me up here then come down here to visit your party, your little pity party. No, I didn't get the invitation. I'm not coming no way, so I'm gonna bring you up here. I'm gonna bring you up here. Woo! Look. See, see, you don't, don't, don't be talking about, well, they don't take all that. Look. You, okay, I ain't gonna argue with you if it don't take all that or not. But, if I'm getting better results my way than you are your way, Enough said. Enough said. Well, you don't know that thing going around. It came on me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, praise God. Okay, I stand. I got it. Yeah, well, it came my way too. But I resisted it. And it had to flee. It had to flee. See, see, the only reason stuff is continuously going on and, on and on and on and on and on in our life is because we're not properly handling what God is saying to us about it. Yes. Yes. Oh, we might do it the first time and the second and third time, but then around the ninth or tenth time, we're getting weary and wore out and tired. Oh, this ain't working. This ain't working. Well, it's working right now. You're saying it. It's working. No, who told you that? Yeah. Who told you that? Look, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. So the you that you are now is a new you and, it's, and, and everything you are as a new you is of God. So if everything that is of you now is a new you, a new creation, and it's of God, why be accepting and tolerant of stuff that's not of God, that don't belong to you, that don't apply to you, that don't fit you, that, that's not yours. That's not yours. And we're too quick to cave into a little discomfort and pressure and let the pressure run us to the world's solution, run us to the world's answers, run us to the world's wisdom. Which, which has great sorrow tied to it. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, I got to quit somewhere. Praise God. Thank you. Glory to God. So, so, all right. So, 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 look, look at verse, look at, look at verse I'm going to read 17, 18, and 19 so you can get the whole flow. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away. The old thing is the old nature. You ain't got two natures. The old one passed away. Right? All right. He is a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. Things are become new. Things is italicized. It's talking about your spirit, your nature. Your spirit, your nature is a new nature. It's the same nature as the resurrected Christ Jesus. It is a sinless nature. It is a sinless nature. It is a sinless nature. All right? Okay, so now look. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself. By Jesus Christ. What does reconciliation mean? Reconciliation. Well, let me read verse 19. Uh, uh, 
it was, it was, it was, no, no, excuse me. Let me read verse, verse 18 in the Amplified. It says, but all things were from God who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. So reconciliation, to simplify that, reconciliation means this. It means to be, to bring to oneness. To bring to oneness, right? Okay, so, so, so all things are of God who hath brought us to oneness with himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation or bringing others to oneness with Jesus Christ. To wit, to witness, to see, to understand that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, bringing the world into oneness with himself. How? Not imputing their trespasses to them. We weren't charged with the, with the crime, so we don't have to do the time. And hath communi co committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Okay, so how, how did God reconcile us to himself or bring us into oneness with himself? He did it through who? He did it through Jesus, and Jesus is the word. word, right? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh, flesh right? So, in order to reconcile or bring us into oneness with himself, he did it through Jesus, who did it through the word. Now, remember what we said from Isaiah 55, every word that comes forth, comes forth for something. Yeah. Every word I'm speaking right now is for something. It's for a purpose. Every word I might speak to you in prophecy or what have you, it is for something. What is that? What is God's intended purpose for the word he sends forth? It is to bring us into oneness yeah. with himself. Now, positionally speaking, every one of us in Christ as a new creature, we've been joined together with the Lord Jesus. We are one spirit with Jesus. We are already one with Jesus per our position in Christ. But the word that he speaks brings us into oneness in terms of our understanding. It brings us into oneness in terms of our revelation, in terms of our outlook, in terms of our knowledge of the truth. Why? So that as we come into oneness in our understanding, and our beliefs then we are in oneness in our circumstances the oneness we have with God is reflected in our circumstances as we embrace it in our heart Amen. see in Christ Jesus you are one with him right okay but the word that's from, that comes forth the word 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 that comes forth do not be weary in well-doing. Don't grow tired. Don't grow fatigued. Yes. There's a strengthening. There's a refreshing. There's been working in you. There's been working on you. That's going to sustain you. That's going to keep you. That's going to propel you. That's going to undergird you. That's going to hold you up. There's understanding and insight into the truth that's being birthed within you right now that will allow you to see past the superficial, past the, 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 the logic and the reason that's presented, to see what God is saying and know the truth about that thing. And so as you walk through it, you walk through it seeing the truth and the end result God has ordained as opposed to being distracted by all the things that jump up along the way. All right? Okay. That word came forth to bring your understanding into oneness with God so that, in your, so that your circumstances will reflect the oneness you have. So that everything about your present circumstances will be realigned and repositioned to reflect who you really are. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's God. That, I'm, I'm, I, I know I used it as an example, but I, was inten I saw you and something clicked inside and I was intentionally waiting for what was to come. And that came. Now, and that, now that can be for everybody, but I know it's for her. My, 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 my point is, my <sighs> think it not strange don't be alone don't be weary 
when things begin to occur to you, when you begin to perceive things and know things that you did not know in the natural. Because it's simply the spirit of truth looking to guide and direct you and help you navigate things and avoid things that Satan has put in your path to, de to derail you. But God says the train is moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you see what I'm saying? Now, when, that, that, when you receive that, you come into oneness in what you believe here and the way you see it here so that the oneness you have in the spirit is reflected in your circumstances. Yes. See, that's why a word, uh, when a word comes forth, it comes forth for us to handle it and wage war with it. See, that's why when you were talking the other day, whenever, you know, you remember what you said when we prayed stuff happened? That's because God knew it was going to happen all along, but he gave you a heads up by sending a word ahead of time to be an anchor for your soul to help you battle what was going to come anyway. You follow what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 so the, so the intent God has for the word coming forth is to bring us into oneness. But it's not going to accomplish the intended purpose of oneness if we don't handle what came forth properly. I got to respond to it properly in my faith. And say it about myself. And stop saying stuff about my life, my marriage, my money, my health that God didn't say. That God didn't say. I got to stop somewhere, so I may as well stop there. Uh, I'm, I am stopping. But while I'm stopping, let me just mention this. <laughs> I, I, I think a good example of this is in Acts chapter 27 remember around verse 20 and it says, and, uh, it, it says after a great while after a period the moon and stars didn't, didn't shine didn't show forth right great wind all that and the people the people had no hope of making it they was in the, in the middle of that storm y'all remember that you remember the situation Acts 27 20 through 25 all right. But then Paul speaks up. Now, now, now Paul, whereas Paul is literally, Paul is literally in the same boat with these people who have lost hope because of the present evil conditions, because of the storm. Paul is literally in the same boat with them. They have lost hope of making it because of the severity of the storm, the circumstances. But Paul tells them, hey, cheer up. Be of good cheer. For there stood by me this day the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. And he said to me that I'm going to give you the life of those who sail with you. And Paul said this. He said, I believe God that it will be as it was told me. Paul did not lose hope in the midst of the storm. Paul looked to God and a word came forth to bring Paul into oneness in his understanding concerning that situation. And Paul took that word, handled it properly and spoke it and released it and encouraged the others with it. And you know, they really took heed to what Paul said because some folks, some folk was trying to cut loose the lifeboats to escape. And Paul told the captain, he said, unless they stay in the boat, you cannot be saved. You know what homeboy did? He cut the boats loose. Ain't nobody's jumping off of this. My point, Paul was a prisoner. He was in chains. Bondage. Yet, Became the premier leading highest influential voice in the middle of that storm. Because he was hearing from God as opposed to accepting the present conditions and circumstances. He, what did he do? He, he was living from Christ. 
his place in Christ, with Christ as a new creation, as opposed to living in self who's caught up in how it looks and how it feels. And that's where we are for the most part. We allow stuff the way it looks and how it feels to move us to, to, to react instead of responding like the new creation that we are. Let's stand on our feet.